fucking gorgeous. Hi, I'm Lisa from A Foot Magazine here with Semi Precious Weapons. That's right, this is Lisa, bitches. <laughs> yep, y'all heard that when I had said that. <laughs> So you guys are on tour right now with Lady Gaga. The one and only. And how is that going with you guys right now? It's pretty much like the best. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> how did you get this experience like brought to you? Well, we've known Gaga for many years. She used to open up for us in New York yes, um, yeah. in punk rock clubs. Uh, so she, we're her favorite band, and uh, she remembered that we were her favorite band when she was the biggest <laughs> pop star in the world. We, can, awesome. we, we continued to be her favorite band even with all the fame, thank God. Did you guys kind of keep in touch, like, yes. in between? Oh, that's cool. Yes. I mean, she's, you know, traveling the world and insanely busy, so it wasn't like we would talk every single day, but it was always an email or a text or something, you know, every now and then, and just, she was always... You know, it was so funny because she'd be doing these huge, massive, you know, she'd perform on American Idol, but she'd send us a text because she was so proud that she, like, saw, you know, a poster of ours in, you know, Aww. Toronto or something. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome. So you guys are, like, huge successes right now. No. Yeah. No, we're definitely, definitely are bringing, um, like, glam rock back into, like, the mainstream. Well, thank you. And um, you have this new album out. It's called You Love You. So tell me about the inspiration behind the, the album. Uh, well, the it was just kind of, you know, we had, we played so many shows as a band. We, you know, before we made that album, we probably played over 300 shows in small, dirty bars all over the world. And um, it was kind of just, you know, we finally got the opportunity to make a real album in, at Ocean Way Studios, which is one of the biggest, uh, amazing studios in the world, with Jack Joseph Quigg, who's a hero of ours. And, um, you know, a lot of the songs are about um, being really, really broke, but really, really happy. And beautiful. And beautiful <laughs> in New York City. And a lot of the songs are about really, really broke, gorgeous, stunning women that are, um, for some reason, all the songs that I write, if they're not about me, they're about really beautiful women that are extremely self-destructive. Do you uh, write all the songs? Or? I write all the lyrics. We write oh, okay. all the music together as a group. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like through your journey to like where you are right now, what are some of the downfalls that you've had to like? <laughs> uh, uh, near death homelessness. <laughs> Do you have six hours? Um, no, it was you know we were almost signed I think four times before we finally got our deal with Geffen Interscope. Um, we uh, you know would show up in cities. You you play a city one month and there'd be three hundred people and you'd go back the next month and there'd only be twelve and you don't know why and. You know, or you, we could play to 2,000 people in New York and then drive an hour to Philadelphia and play to 20 people. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you show up and the actual business that you're supposed to play at is closed. <laughs> yeah. Oh. For rent. <laughs> yep. oh, no. Yeah. Or sometimes you, you get like a bottle thrown at your head while people say horrible things at you. That's awful. Yeah, we've yeah. been through. But I bet they're laughing right now, right? <laughs> well, we're laughing. Yeah, right? we're laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're crying. They probably still hate us. That's right, I threw a bottle at those assholes. Yeah. yeah. I'm on their team now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the highlights that you've you've had so far? I, mean, I think our, our highlights always the reason why we never quit when we should have quit, whether it was a record deal falling through or awful shows or whatever it was, is that even if there were 10 people there, uh, only 10 people there, or even if, you know, an A&R guy really wanted to sign us but his boss wouldn't let him because we're too dangerous and too risky, it was that that, that one A&R guy always really loved us. Or those 10 people at that show, you know, really, really believed that had more fun than they've ever had. Mm -hmm. Or really early in our life as a band, you know, Tony Visconti, who produced all the Bowie records yes, and T-Rex. Yes, yes, yeah. He came to our show and said we were the best live band he'd seen in 20 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, no matter how awful things are going, it's like, well, if Tony Visconti said we're the best band he's seen yeah. in 20 years, then we, we have shouldn't to be, quit today. Yeah. Maybe on Saturday we'll quit. Yeah. But <laughs> he, he managed David Bowie, didn't he? He produced. He produced. He produced. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's that's insane. Awesome. So he like produced like 12 Bowie records, all the T-Rex records, and so there's always, uh, and then obviously Gaga bringing us on tour is a yeah. huge highlight, a high point for us, and in so many ways, one, the exposure is insane. And two, you know, getting to tour the world with one of your best friends yeah. is really, oh, really nuts. Nice. And exposing yeah. Yeah. thirteen year old pop kids to really to, loud, yeah, horribly sure. uh, offensive rock and roll. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, when they thought they were gonna come and hear a tropical robot, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool, very cool. 
So what do you think that we're going to expect to see from you maybe in like 2011, maybe? We hope to be the biggest band in the world. Yeah. Uh, we hope to be the most loved and the most hated band in the world because all good rock and roll is polarizing. Um, and uh, that's what we expect for 2011. Yeah. <laughs> so whether that happens or not is up to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, with any luck, our drummer Dan will be deceased by then. <laughs> I'm hoping to not last the week. So I know you guys all have very different styles. Like, where do you guys all get your influences from? Uh, mine is from really, really beautiful blonde women of, uh, of Hollywood past. Mm -hmm. Sharon Stone, Marissa Tomei, uh, Marilyn Monroe, Mae West, nice. on and on and on. Um, but that's only me. That does not apply to yeah, anyone not, else. Not though. really yeah. Mae West. Yeah. Really, <laughs> yeah. I'm like LL Cool J, James Dean, and like, you know when you don't pay your rent and you get evicted and they throw all your shit yeah. on the sidewalk? That, like that. that guy. Yeah. No, the stuff. <laughs> oh, the not stuff. Not the guy. Oh, the okay, stuff. okay. Yeah. The pile of stuff. Yeah, I'm an eviction notice. <laughs> yeah. And what about you guys? Well, Wigs. no one really knows who killed my half-sister. Right. So that's his inspiration. That's, uh, <laughs> and I'm inspired by Marissa Tomei, but not to wear clothes, but to take off my clothes. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so when you guys are going on stage, is there some like weird little like ritual that you guys do for good luck? Like every time? Uh, we hide evidence. Just, <laughs> Justin does like ballet and drinks, <laughs> champagne. Mm -hmm. I drink whiskey and kick fight the air. Yeah, yeah, fight the air. Dan reads and stevie goes far away from us yeah stevie, hides, stevie from us. hides from us for about a half an hour before we go on stage or 45 minutes he calls it the zone but really it's because he hates us <laughs> and so he likes to just get away awesome so i know that you <laughs> <Awesome>. have a... <laughs> so i know that you have um a, a jewelry line actually yes. so tell us a little bit about that uh the jewelry started as band merch mm -hmm. um was just kind of determined to make money uh, without having a day job um, for the band. So I, we were selling these necklaces. And obviously, the band name is Semi Precious Weapons, so the idea of jewelry kind of goes with it. Mm -hmm. So we made all these weapon and heart necklaces. And then I just kind of harassed boutiques in New York until they bought them so I wouldn't need a job. And then I realized when people were really buying them a lot that I was like, well, if I harassed huge stores, and they bought them, then I could actually pay for the band. And we wouldn't need a record deal. Oh, so it worked. Yeah. yeah. And so we did that, and so I harassed Urban Outfitters, and they bought it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Barney's, which is a very high-end yeah, store in America, yeah. they bought it. Um, and so we kind of existed without a label for a while, um, but we we kind of missed the point. A label pays for lots of things, but really what you need their help with is for exposure yeah. and for yeah. setting things up for you and making things happen. Um, so we blew all this money uh, <laughs> that I made from the jewelry, and still no one knew who we were. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but, well, it was worth it. It was a, well, a very good, now, right? exactly, yeah. and it was a great learning experience. And um, it was kind. Of, it was actually really amazing to be able to have no. We weren't paying our rent, but we were flying to London to perform. That's we weren't paying crazy. our rent, but we were flying to Toronto. We weren't paying our rent, but we were flying to LA. Yeah. So it's kind of actually a, an experience um, that I don't think any other band has ever had. You know, we all have degrees in music, and all of a sudden yes, I'm making. Yeah thousands of dollars from jewelry yeah um, but it was insane amounts of hard work you know we've made over 200,000 pieces of jewelry with our own hands oh you make it your we make it wow, ourselves band awesome. sweatshop band sweatshop <laughs> rock and roll labor yeah. so um, I think it's you know it's it's a it's a story uh, I, I would hope that it would it, it would we really wanted to exist without labels and really do it mm -hmm. um, uh, but that didn't work out so well. But it did give us a story that I don't think any other band can tell. Yeah, and those yeah. Russian mail order brides were a good investment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. For the band. Yeah. So where did you guys get your um, your name from? Like. Um, Justin called. This is a really interesting story. Mm -hmm. Justin called me on the phone because mm -hmm. we'd been friends for so many years and said, "Cole, we're starting a band called Summer Versus Weapons." And I said, "All right." <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> Semicolon, 2010, not mm -hmm. 1864. And then I called them and I said the exact same thing. They were both living in Boston at the time still because we went to school in Boston. Yeah. And he and I moved to New York 
and they stayed in Boston. And I just called them and said, yep, uh, we're starting this band, and it's called Sandy Precious Weapons. Yeah. So uh, get into it. So they would drive down every weekend to rehearse, and then they would drive down whenever we had a show. Um, and all the cool parties in New York are like on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So they'd like miss work for a week to come play a show on a Wednesday. And, and then everyone ended up living on Justin's floor. <laughs> <laughs> Until Justin got evicted and there was no floor left. <laughs> yep. And then Dan would sleep with girls for rent. That's a, <laughs> that's a good way to 2010. Get rent. <laughs> that's actually the truth. Oh really? Yeah, Dan would like get a new girlfriend every couple of weeks to, to to stay with her. Oh okay. Oh, that's hilarious. Yep. And then he lived in his car for a while, much like Jewel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> much like. You Jewel. A lot of similarities uh, to Jewel, actually. And yeah, Stevie worked yeah. in, a, oh! in a warehouse. <laughs> Um, like a, uh, uh, like, but like a, uh, a ex like a weird experimental music warehouse. So he was like, but he wasn't like doing cool things at his job. He was like working in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so that's what Stevie was doing. And he played in the circus. Yeah. For real? Yeah. Did you? What yeah. did you do in the circus? I played in the band. He played bass oh, in the circus. Oh, you played in the band. That's yeah. cool. It was cool. That is very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So... Before I kind of let you guys go, like if you can just kind of tell us like a motto that you live by kind of every day. Uh, there's two mottos. Dirty showbiz, which is that rock and roll should be dirty and it also should be a show. Mm -hmm. And two is um, to work our asses off even though it appears like we're doing nothing. Awesome. Or it appears like we're just partying but we're actually working harder than we ever thought we would. Luckily, most of our work involves signing tits. Yeah. Or, ta or talking into them. Or talking into tits. Yes, you're exactly right. Yeah. And luckily, these are fantastic tits to talk into, so it's been a great outfit. I'm not blocking any of her in the shot, am I? Because that would be an interstellar tragedy. I'm moving over here. Goodbye. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for taking the time to talk Thank you. Tell me something.